Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Richard Metal Fan Interviews. This is episode number 15, and today we're going to be talking to none other than Jonas Stahlhammer. He's the guitarist for At The Gates, and he also plays in Lurking Fear and a plethora of other bands. Today we're going to be talking about the new At The Gates album, which comes out July 2nd through Century Media Records entitled The Nightmare of Being. We're going to be talking about that, the whole songwriting, um, just like the whole Gothenburg scene in general, and much more. So, without further ado, let's go talk to Jonas. So, I am here with uh, Jonas from At The Gates. Jonas, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing fantastic. So, today we're going to be talking about the new album, The from the Nightmare of Being, which comes out July 2nd through Century Media Records. Now, you've released the singles Spectre of Extinction, The Paradox, and Fall Into Time. Is this kind of like a clear representation of what the entirety of the Nightmare of Being will sound like, or is there just more to be expected? Uh, there's a lot more to be expected from the album. It's got a lot of twists and turns that might call people, <laughs> like get people caught off guard and stuff, so... Which is why it's an inter interesting album to listen to, I think. Awesome. Will you consider this kind of like like a follow-up to To Drink From The Night itself, in a way? Or is it sort of like a new beginning for At The Gates? Uh, kind of both. I mean, we started sniffing around at some of the stuff that we do on this album, on the last one. but uh, like, And a lot of stuff is actually more enkindled with the, like the old stuff from like the first two albums, but done in a, like now in 2021, instead of back in 91, 92, you know? So it's, it's a lot more like better done, I think. But it's the same kind of like influences and stuff that was floating around back then. Right, so it's still like, like continuing, like it's still at the gates at the end. Like if you compare it to like Slard Slard of the Soul to the Drink from the Night itself and to this new al album, I could tell what is off of what album, but at the end of the day it's still gonna be at the gates. Yeah. Right. Now do, now when it now we're gonna go into songwriting. Now when you when you ever enter like the songwriting process with a preconceived idea, or is there a lot of like trial and error or experimentation that's involved? Well uh Jonas uh, wrote the whole album, the, all the music for it. And uh, I mean, he he doesn't really like come with like, I have a riff or something. He comes usually with a, a song that's like 80, 90% finished when he shows it us, the rest of us. And uh, then we all like come with like ideas for arrangements and stuff and maybe shorten that part or lengthen that part or switch those two around and stuff like that, you know. But usually it's like cohesive ideas from the beginning, you know, so. Right, right. Do you also get inspiration, Shin, or does it just come out of nowhere? Or do you have to, like, put yourself in a certain element to get ideas when it comes to making songs? Uh, for me personally, well, I haven't written anything for Arctic Gates, but when I write for other bands that I'm in, you know, I don't really have to put myself in a like certain space or something for songwriting it's usually uh, just every more or less every time i sit down with the guitar i write something i i never really practice i mean i practice like songs for playing live but i never practiced like techniques or whatever you know i just more or less just write songs when i play guitar all right uh, do you also feel like when you the longer you work on something is it harder to like maintain the original idea to when you first started well, I'll try not to overwork stuff. I mean, sometimes you can go if you write a song and it's like maybe it's a uh, six months or something until you actually record it. Uh, and I mean, in these days, you do like pretty good like demos at home, so you can actually hear more or less how the song is going to sound in the end, anyway. And uh, sometimes you go back and like, oh, maybe I should change that bit, you know, like six months later or something, you know. That, that can happen, but that, not like always. Right, right. And so 
like like I noticed with ever since like the, the comeback albums with that or reality, a drink for the night itself, and this new album, it sort of like thrives on conceptual albums. So I guess it's fair to say that an at the gates album isn't like shuffle friendly. You just have to listen, like especially with this new album, you listen it with when you start with the specter of extinction and you end with eternal winter of reason. Yeah, yeah I mean uh, that's how I like to listen to records too, and then like. The way I like to do records too is actually you you need to listen to it all the way through, you know. I mean, you can still shuffle songs around when you listen to the album, or whatever, you know. Sometimes you, oh, I want to listen to that song right now, you know, whatever. But it's this is definitely an album you need to listen to from beginning to end because it's it's kind of a thread all through it, even though it's got its twists and turns. It's still got everything is connected in some way, you know. So. All right. And as uh, I mean, now the lyrics are, are a concept, you know, it's been like that the last three albums have been like the lyrical concepts have been one cohesive idea from Thomas. So, uh, all right. All right. And I also got to ask this. And I mean, obviously, you weren't in the band at this point, but la last year was the 25th anniversary of Sorry to the Soul. But next year will be the 30th anniversary of the debut album, Red Sky is Ours. But, but my, what I want to ask is, is do you remember when you first heard those albums yeah well i mean i've i've known the guys since even before at the gates of form so i mean i've heard all the i mean me and thomas go back to like 88 so like through tape trading and going to to shows together even though we were different parts of the country you know but we we all went to the same shows all the time and I mean, that's the reason why I'm in the band because they asked me because they've known me for years and and since me and Thomas and Adrian play in the same in another band together it's, it's a kind of a given almost but uh back to the point uh I mean her, hearing though I remember when hearing just hearing Gardens of Grief the first mini album and I thought it was amazing you know it's like uh, all those early albums they're really they're kind of weird also when Alf was in the band he did some really like out there stuff and uh kind of going back to what we're doing on the new album is kind of that kind of stuff but a bit more controlled and they I mean the band can actually play this stuff now <laughs> better than they they could back then you know so uh, I mean uh, all those al the early albums are like milestones I think I think awesome and with sort of the soul i mean it's still to this day it's a legacy for like death melodic death metal or death metal in general and even bands who are even in the melodic death metal metal genre cite this as, as an influence especially with like the whole metalcore mo movement that happened in like the mid 2000s but when you hear from pe people that that cite that as an influence does that in a way sort of like make you or inspire you or make you look at this stuff in a different way not really. I mean, it's like that whole, I mean, I can't really speak for it since I don't play in the album and I don't have a part in it like that. But I, I mean, I know what the other guys say sometime about that. It's like, uh, it took a few years before that album started to like get that kind of reputation. But I think mainly because a lot of those bands were like a generation younger than us. So it's, uh, I mean, I remember, it's the same like albums from, for us growing up were from bands that were a generation before us, you know, and you take it in a different way, you know, I mean, I can hear some of the influences in the metalcore stuff, but at the same time, I, I don't really see it. <laughs> yeah. And it's, it's not, not really the same thing, you know, so. Right. All right, I'm also excited to hear the nightmare of being in a live setting with like going back to like the anniversary stuff with the 30th anniversary of Red Sky is ours. And of course, well, we'll just call it still the 25th anniversary of Sword of Soul. Can we expect maybe a special set whenever live shows return? Uh, well, I think we're still doing some of the Slaughter of the Soul shows we're still doing uh, next year. Yeah, uh, I don't think we have any any of the shows that we're actually doing this year. Later this year is one of those, but yeah. we I mean, we managed to do one of those shows, which was on uh, the Seven Thousand Tons uh, cruise. I've heard about that. That was awesome. Yeah. 
some, and I'm hopefully like you'll do see you at Psycho Las Vegas next year to do that. Yeah, yeah. That, that and w when playing live, live, and I mean, I was kind of like a late comer to seeing you guys live. I first saw you all at 2018 teen with a behemoth and wolves in the throne room, then 2019 yeah. with the uh, Amana Marth and Arch Enemy. And for the occasion, I'm re repping the shirt from when I last saw you guys. <laughs> But when playing live, do you channel like a similar energy as to making songs, or is sort of like two completely different things? It's really two completely different things, you know. So, and then, which it should be, I think. I mean, I, I can get a bit like uh, these days. I mean, a lot of like, I mean, for myself, I mean, I still go to a lot of shows, uh, but like hearing a band that uses like trying to make it sound exactly like it does on the record kind of takes away the the live feeling from me you know it's it's supposed to be two completely different things and i mean there's a lot of stuff that's on nightmare being that we actually can't do live you know uh, especially uh, this like shit loads of guitar parts on certain songs that you you can't do that with just two guitar players you know and Right. We don't want to use like too much backing tracks. We do it for intros and stuff. And there's uh, all the orchestral bits and that might be like in the middle of a song. We use that as backing tracks for good reason, you know, but not using like, uh, like guitar stuff and having that as backing tracks. I think it's, it's a bit cheating, I think, to the audience because you, you, I mean, you, you shouldn't be, you should be able to just take the bits that's actually needed and they, i mean a lot of the other stuff is just coloring you know which makes it sound even more massive but live should be a completely different thing than studio i think right right so you totally you just want to want to see what you can do on the albums is what you can pull off live yeah all right anyway i got two more questions for you yeah get ready ready for the hardest one <laughs> how do you know when a song is done uh is the song ever done? <laughs> uh, I mean, there's always, I mean, more or less every record I've done, there's always stuff that, oh, I wish I've done that differently. And, you know, because sometimes, at the same time, it's 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 there for the moment, you know, the, the song is there for the taking almost. So it's like, it's there, when it's there, you grab it and then you go with what you got, you know, and, uh, and just, I mean, you feel, it's the feeling when you, you know, when a song is like record, you know, all right. Cause usually it's always like bits like, oh, maybe that part was a bit too long or whatever, that, those kinds of things that you want to change, you know, but. All right. Uh, and the final question I want to ask is, I think Sweden has like the greatest bands, like yeah, of course you. the At The Gates, In Flames, Dark Tranquility, The Haunted like so many great bands. So was there like a scene in Gothenburg that you felt a part of, or was the goal to like get out of Sweden to like play in front of different audiences in different countries? Uh, I mean, once again, I can't speak for the others. Uh, no, I, I mean, since I'm not from Gothenburg either, so I wasn't part of the Gothenburg scene at all. So, oh. I, I mean, where I come from is more, is the Stockholm scene. That's uh, that's where I come from, really, you know, and I don't really come from the Gothenburg scene at all. But uh, you can see, watch the two. There's a lot of difference between sound between the Stockholm and Gothenburg scene. But the actual, like, what was happening was kind of the same. It just the music took two different directions. And uh, the only really, like, I mean, death metal was the core of it. And, and a lot of punk was part of, at least for At The Gates, it was a lot of punk involved. Uh, like hardcore stuff and like uh, crust punk, you know, discharge and stuff like that. But that was even more prominent in the Stockholm scene. And the Stockholm scene was a lot more like dirtier and grittier. It was a lot more like autopsy and stuff like that for the Stockholm scene, while uh, Gothenburg was more, more polished, I think. But I mean, looking back at the Gothenburg scene, it was. I mean, the Gothenburg scene didn't really get, like, really polished until the mid-90s, I think. Right. Like, in the early, early in the beginnings of it it, it, it was all pretty, like, dirty as well, you know. But, but as I mean, as you grow older, you, as a musician, you, like, evolve. If you don't, there's something wrong, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, totally. 
Lee, so uh, before we go, I just want to thank you for this interview. Is there just anything else you'd like to promote for the release of The Nightmare of Being? I mean, obviously, thanks to this uh, bullshit virus that I refuse to name on my channel. Uh, touring's <laughs> not happening yet, but th if things are slowly starting to open back up. But once everything is all open up, and it will be, we'll see you at the gates on the road quite a bit. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I don't think we kind of agreed that we're not going to tour as much on this record that we did on the last one. I mean, we did two European tours and two US tours on the last album. And this time I think we're just going to do one of each. There might be like some extra stuff in the US, but, uh, but still we're going to play a lot live for this record. Uh, I mean, we, we got shitloads that was booked for last year that we still haven't done that being like pushed to next year now. So. All right. So there's uh, there's gonna be a lot of people that are gonna be able to see at the gates next year, and hopefully later this year also. So yeah, we're looking forward to it. So everyone, Jonas from at the gates, everyone. This is Richard Metalthan, and we'll see you next time.